how well do you really know the person you love? And what if you discover that everything you thought was true was a lie? For years, I believed I had it all. A beautiful home, an endless stream of luxury, and a husband who adored me, or so it seemed. Julian was everything a woman could dream of, handsome, intelligent, and wealthy beyond imagination. We met at a charity gala, and from that night on, my life was a whirlwind of romance and extravagance. My friends envied me, my family adored him, but as I would soon learn, appearances can be deceiving. In the beginning, I hardly noticed the subtle changes. Julian was protective, which I found endearing at first. He wanted to know where I was always, who I was with, what I was doing. It felt like love, like he genuinely cared. But then, the protectiveness turned into something darker. He began to isolate me from my family and friends, convincing me that they were only after our money, that they didn't truly care about me the way he did. He would say, no one understands you like I do. And I believed him. How could I not? He was my husband, my partner, the one who promised to cherish me until death do us part. But the more I distanced myself from my old life, the more I realized how alone I truly was. Julian's love felt suffocating, like a cage built from his affection. He controlled every aspect of my life, what I wore, what I ate, how I spent my time. I couldn't breathe without his permission, but still, I convinced myself that this was normal, that it was just the price of loving someone so intensely. After all, he always knew best. It wasn't until the nightmares began that I started to question my reality. In my dreams, I was visited by figures from my past, my ancestors. They spoke to me in whispers, their faces twisted in pain and sorrow. They warned me, told me things about Julian that I couldn't believe. How he manipulated me, used dark psychology to bend my will to his. They showed me images of my family, trying desperately to reach out to me. But I was too far gone, too lost in Julian's world to hear their cries. I would wake up in a cold sweat, trembling with fear. But Julian was always there, comforting me, telling me it was just a bad dream. You're safe with me, he would say, his voice like velvet. No one can hurt you here. But as the dreams grew more frequent, more vivid, I began to doubt him. My ancestors were relentless, their warnings more desperate with each passing night. They showed me things, terrible things, about Julian, about his past, about the people who had mysteriously disappeared from his life. Still, I refused to believe it. How could the man I loved be capable of such evil? Then, one night, the dreams took a darker turn. My ancestors didn't just warn me, they showed me. I was led through the corridors of our mansion to a room I had never seen before. The air was thick with the scent of decay and the walls were lined with pictures of me from every moment of our life together. But these weren't happy memories. They were images of control, of dominance. In the center of the room was a box, and inside it, I found the proof. Photographs, documents, recordings, all of them detailing Julian's manipulation, his plan to isolate me, to make me dependent on him until I had no one else to turn to. When I woke, the terror from the dream clung to me like a second skin. I could no longer deny the truth. My husband was a monster a master of dark psychology, who had twisted my mind to suit his needs, and I was his prisoner. I knew I had to escape, but how? Julian controlled everything, my money, my phone, even the staff in the house. There was no one I could trust, no one who could help me, no one except the spirits of my ancestors. 
they came to me again, this time in the waking world. I could feel their presence, guiding me, showing me the way out. It started with small things, keys hidden in places only I would find, doors that should have been locked, suddenly left open. It was as if they were leading me, step by step, toward my freedom. I began to prepare in secret, gathering whatever I could, clothes, money, anything that would help me survive once I was out. Every night, I would pretend to be the dutiful wife, cooking Julian's dinner, listening to his endless monologues about his business, about how he was the only one who truly understood me. But inside, I was planning, waiting for the right moment to strike. That moment came sooner than I expected. One night, after Julian had fallen asleep, I was woken by a cold breeze and the faint sound of whispering. My ancestors were there, urging me to go, telling me it was time. My heart pounded in my chest as I crept out of bed, careful not to wake Julian. I could hear his steady breathing, the sound of a man who believed he had everything under control. But he was wrong, so very wrong. With the help of my ancestors, I made my way through the darkened house, avoiding the creaking floorboards and the ever-watchful eyes of the security cameras. They led me to a hidden passage, one that I had never known existed. It took me out of the house and into the woods behind our property, where a car was waiting for me. I didn't know how it had gotten there or who had left it, but I didn't care. I climbed in and drove as fast as I could, not daring to look back. As the miles stretched between me and that house, the weight of Julian's control began to lift. I was free, finally free, but the scars of what he had done to me would never fully heal. Even now, as I sit here in a small, rented apartment far from the life I once knew, I can't escape the memories. I can't stop looking over my shoulder, waiting for the day Julian finds me because I know he will. Men like him don't let go easily. Weeks passed in a blur of paranoia and fear. I changed my name, my appearance, trying to erase every trace of the woman I once was. But no matter how far I ran, I could still feel his presence, like a shadow looming over me, watching, waiting. The nightmares returned, but this time, they weren't just dreams. I would wake up in the middle of the night, convinced that Julian was in the room with me, standing over my bed, his cold eyes boring into my soul. One night, I heard a knock on the door. It was late, too late for visitors. My heart raced as I approached the door, every instinct telling me to run, to hide. But I couldn't move. I had to know. I had to see. I opened the door, and there he was. Julian standing in the dim light of the hallway, his face a mask of calm control. You didn't think you could hide from me forever, did you? His voice was soft, almost gentle, but there was a darkness behind it, a cold, calculating malice that sent chills down my spine. I tried to slam the door, but he was too quick. He forced his way inside, his grip on my arm like a vice. You're mine. He whispered, his breath hot against my ear. You always have been. My mind raced, desperately searching for a way out. My ancestors, where were they? Why weren't they helping me? Panic set in as I realized I was alone, trapped with the man who had taken everything from me. But then, just as I felt the last of my hopes slipping away, I heard them, the whispers faint at first, but growing louder, stronger. They were with me, guiding me, giving me strength. I twisted in Julian's grip, wrenching myself free. He stumbled back, momentarily caught off guard. It was all the time I needed. I ran to the kitchen, grabbing the first thing I could find, 
a knife. I turned to face him, my hands trembling, but my resolve unwavering. You won't control me anymore, I said, my voice steady, despite the terror coursing through me. Julian laughed, a low, menacing sound that made my blood run cold. You think you can stop me? He sneered, taking a step closer. You're nothing without me. Just a scared little girl playing at being strong. But I wasn't playing. I was done being afraid. With the spirits of my ancestors behind me, I felt a surge of power, a fierce determination to end this once and for all. As Julian lunged at me, I struck, the knife slicing through the air with a swiftness that surprised even me. There was a moment of silence, a heartbeat suspended in time, and then he fell, crumpling to the floor with a look of shock and disbelief on his face. I stood over him, panting, the knife still clutched in my hand. It was over. Julian was gone the relief I expected never came. Instead, I was consumed by a profound emptiness, a void where my fear had once been. The man who had controlled me, who had twisted my mind and isolated me from everyone I loved, was dead. But the scars he left behind would never fade. I collapsed to the floor, tears streaming down my face. My ancestors' whispers surrounded me, soothing comforting, but it wasn't enough. I had won, but at what cost? I had taken a life, and even though it was in self-defense, the weight of what I'd done pressed down on me like a boulder, crushing the breath from my lungs. I couldn't think, couldn't breathe, my vision narrowing to a dark tunnel as panic set in. But then, through the haze of fear, I felt a presence stronger than before, more tangible. My ancestors were with me, their whispers turning into words, clear and insistent. You must leave now. Asterisk. The voice of my great-grandmother echoed in my mind, a firm, unwavering command. I knew she was right. Julian's death wouldn't stay hidden for long. I had to move to get as far away from this place as possible. But my body refused to cooperate, every muscle locked in place by the shock of what had just happened. Get up! Another voice, this one more urgent, snapping me out of my paralysis. I forced myself to stand, my legs trembling beneath me. I stumbled toward the door, leaving Julian's lifeless body behind without a second glance. As I reached the front door, a wave of nausea hit me, but I swallowed it down, focusing on the task at hand. I had to escape before it was too late. Outside, the night was eerily quiet, the air thick with tension. I could still feel the eyes of my ancestors watching over me, guiding me, but the fear gnawed at my insides, refusing to let go. What if this wasn't over? What if Julian wasn't really gone? I could almost hear his voice in the wind, mocking me, telling me I could never escape him. I climbed into the car, my hands shaking as I fumbled with the keys. The engine roared to life, and I sped away from the mansion, the tires screeching on the pavement. My heart pounded in my chest, every instinct screaming at me to go faster put as much distance between myself and that place as possible. But no matter how fast I drove, I couldn't outrun the fear. The road stretched out before me, a dark ribbon winding through the trees. And for a moment, I felt like I was driving straight into oblivion. The farther I went, the more the whispers of my ancestors began to fade, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Alone with the memory of Julian's twisted smile, his eyes full of malice, even in death. I kept driving, pushing the car to its limits, but something in the rearview mirror caught my eye. A shadow 
dark and fleeting, moving in the distance. My breath hitched as I glanced back, my mind racing with possibilities. Was it just my imagination? Or was something, or someone, following me? I couldn't be sure, but the dread in my stomach told me to keep going. Faster. Don't look back. But the shadow was growing, getting closer, and the sense of being hunted washed over me. I slammed my foot on the gas, the car surging forward. But no matter how far I drove, the shadow stayed with me, like a ghost of Julian's dark will, refusing to let me go. Suddenly, my phone buzzed on the seat next to me, the sound startling me so much, I almost swerved off the road. I picked it up with trembling hands, expecting the worst. But when I looked at the screen, the breath left my body in a gasp. It was a message from an unknown number. The words were simple, but they sent ice through my veins. You can't escape me. Asterisk. I threw the phone onto the passenger seat, my mind reeling. It couldn't be Julian. He was dead. I saw him die. But who else could it be? Who would know where I was? What I had done? The realization hit me like a freight train. This wasn't over. It would never be over. Julian's reach extended beyond the grave, his dark influence still wrapped around my life, suffocating me, even now. I screamed, a raw, primal sound that echoed in the small space of the car. The shadows in the mirror seemed to pulse, closing in, and I knew in that moment that this was my punishment, my curse. No matter where I ran, no matter how far I tried to escape, I would always be looking over my shoulder, always be haunted by the ghost of Julian's control. The road ahead blurred with tears as I realized the truth. I had escaped the physical chains that bound me, but the psychological ones, the ones Julian had so carefully crafted, those would follow me forever. The fight wasn't over. It had only just begun. The whispers of my ancestors returned, more distant now, almost a memory, as if they were fading back into the other world, their task done. They had saved me from Julian's immediate grasp, but they couldn't protect me from the darkness he'd planted in my mind. That was a battle I would have to fight on my own, every day, for the rest of my life. If you found this story chilling, don't forget to like this video and share your thoughts in the comments. What would you do if you discovered someone you loved was using dark psychology against you? Let me know below. And be sure to check out my channel for more horror stories that will keep you up at night.